YouTubers out there. Um, <coughs> I mean, why don't you take this <coughs> amp I've made apart and show you for a while. Basic amp, nothing more than on-off switch, volume control, on the back you've got mains input, IEC, fuse, you have your output speaker spring terminal outputs, and two RCA plugs for input. The ends of the case are integral heat sinks, it's a bit shiny. Um, front panel is made out of, I think it's 3mm by 50mm aluminium bar. Same with the back panel, and the top is just some sheet aluminium. So I'll take it apart and show you what's inside. Okay, so here's the inside. main power transformer, toroil transformer thing. So the two amplifier modules are silicon chip modules. That are, I've forgotten what they're called but made by J uh, produced by Altronics. Um, so there's two of them. Um, and then there is this power supply board down in here. That has a piece of uh, plastic glued over the top of it. Just protect the top of those capacitors from the inside of the top panel. Um, so I did the main switch is a double pole switch, it's rated at 2 amp, 250 volt AC. So as I'm only using a 1 amp fuse in the back, that's fine. Um, just a basic pot arrangement. All the ground star is all... Ground starring points are all preserved and everything. So you make sure you ground everything back, that's why these are insulated RCA sockets so they're not grounded to the case there they're actually grounded when they go into the modules themselves is where they and they're grounded through the modules um, the case probably took the most amount of actual work because there's just a lot of drilling and tapping holes like you know, for each heatsink alone there's one there one there one there one two on the bottom and two on each ends so, you know, two, four, six, eight, nine holes in each, just in each heatsink. Then there's each of these, there's four of these rails. These are bits of, they're just um, angle. I think it's 10 by 10 by three ang aluminum angle. Um, there's four of them, one in each sort of corner, in inverted commas. And they each have two holes in the front and four holes across the top. Actually, I think the bottom ones only have three. Yeah, I changed my mind between the top and the bottom. Between doing the bottom one and doing the top one. The bottom's actually also a bit thicker aluminium sheet, but that's just the way it worked out. Um, what else? Not much really, it just, just was a lot of, you know, assembly, you know, drilling and tapping holes. A lot of drilling and tapping. Um, marking out for all the, where all the modules had to go so that they were just right was also not easy. Um, well, oh, yeah, that's right. Maybe you can see right in there, but there is silicon. You might not better see it's a bit dark. Oh, that's better. There's silicon on the capacitors. Just a little dob there and there on both sides. And also on some of these other ones. Um, and these ones, because they, they're just sitting there. And you, ideally, you should put the dob underneath, but I didn't, so I had to do it afterwards. Um... That's about it, I think. So if my head shows in the way, but I need more lighting to do this better. And yes, it works. It works quite well. I've got it driving a pair of Cambridge Audio speakers. Um, they're just up here. One there, and one over there. I'm really impressed with them. They're quite expensive, like $320 a pair, or $350 a pair. Where's the marker? Cambridge Audio there. Um, but they're very nice. I think they're rated at 50 watts. This is only 25, so they don't have a problem there. And they're loud, lots of bass. The main problem is they're in that big 
this big shelf cavity which has a resonance in the hundreds of hertz and you can hear it there's some music you can definitely hear the resonance and I don't really have enough space behind them either because they have a port on the back so so yeah that's the other problem um, but the amplifier itself is great the set of speakers um, works really well if I was doing it another time I might consider binding posts on the back but then I don't think I don't know how I would have fitted them I mean it was a struggle to fit everything in the case as it was the idea was to make it compact as I'm taking as I'm taking it to uni with me um, which I have and it's great for the just you know that sort of purpose shadow in the way yes I need more overhead lighting but Yes, it's an internal look at it. The wires in here are twisted together, as you can see, minimal interference. They're all grounded to that a star point just in there. Pausing so much because there's not enough light. Um, that star is the ground point there, that's just all, all your proper arrangements with that. And goes up to that point there, which is your star. Ground then goes out to each of the modules, and from there, the audio input is grounded. Notice also that at the pot up here, the grounds aren't connected between the two channels. So the only place that each of these RCA connectors is grounded is through that input connector on the amplifier module. And then back through wiring and back into there, back to ground. Because the whole case is aluminium, not plastic panels or anything, it's got incredibly good RF shielding. I had it um, unplugged, like the the, uh, the leads unplugged and plugged in, I've tried it with both just in case it made a difference um, with something plugged in and unplugged at the other end as well and you sit your mobile phone on top of it and call someone or someone calls you um, and you can't hear it putting it here right to the speaker with the volume knob not turned all the way up because it's just like almost 100% shielding, there's you know, little cracks in the place but the RF shielding's amazing um so yeah that's that's it um oh, yeah, cable management lots and lots of cable ties as you can see and these little cable clips i really like these cable clips they just you peel the backing off and stick them down into the stick them down they've stuck they're really well stuck in there i use quite a few of them throughout the whole thing to clip things all together um Main safety, all the stuff's all heat shrunk, all everything's you know, covered in heat shrink. Another thing, the, even the spare terminals on the switch. Now, theoretically, you could, yeah, it is possible to zap yourself on those exposed terminals if you have the top off and you do everything wrong. So, so yeah, that's why that's heat shrunk. Um, so, yes, diodes, sort of bridge rectifier. Um, I was doing it another time, if you notice on the bottom, um, yes it does have uh, electrical safety approval sticker, because it had to, to, to be allowed to use here, it's got my name on it, um, you'll see that it's a, it's a um, sort of a, a dint, you can see sort of a dint where that bolt where I tightened it down, I'd put a metal plate on the inside, and underneath there, like a 2mm metal plate, or just, I'd, I'd see if I could order one and find one somewhere that would just fit underneath that bolt and also use a bigger washer on the outside or another washer in addition to that one I did put additional feet on the neck that's where the main most of the weight is so the weight of the transformer sits on those feet rather than bending the bottom of the, or bottom of the case out and stressing boards and everything um, yeah, so when you plug it down it doesn't no, it doesn't you know, sort of bend the whole thing and that seems to work quite well yeah, so I'm, I'm quite happy with it overall. Get this bit out. So overall, great amp, great sound quality, and um, hope it inspires you to build something of your own.